So uh, in the in the in the in the leaflet of the the, the brochure, you will find uh, that actually Jeroen would be giving this presentation. But uh, since Jeroen has another presentation this afternoon, he asked me to prepare it. So, uh, but uh, you can ask him questions <laughs> afterwards. Um, so, yeah, when looking at the schedule, I noticed that um, there's actually in the auditorium currently there's an Esri going open. Session. Okay, that's nice. But oh, but this one is also. So I also have ArcGIS here. So I wonder, are there any ArcGIS users in the room? Or oh yeah, some. Well, that's great. Yeah, but it's great that you choose this presentation instead of the other one. <laughs> um, well, <coughs> so uh, with GeoCat, we're we're founders and um, in co and core maintainers of the Geo Network Open Source Project, and uh, well, uh, some mentioning about that later. But uh, today I'm here presenting on a, on a, an ArcGIS extension we have to to publish data in in the cloud. Um, so if you are an ArcMap user, and uh, you would like to publish your data as, as an OGC service, then uh, you want to have interoperable services, you want to create fancy web maps, and uh, you want to have people find and use your data, and you want to conform to regulations like uh, WCAG, that's uh, uh, usability, uh, accessibility guidelines, Inspire, privacy guidelines. Um, then uh, the product might be useful for you. So traditionally, what you would do is you would use this kind of tools to, to like uh, convert your data to, to something which can be ported to the web. You would like upload it with an FTP protocol or something, and then uh, you would uh, use typically. Well, that's. Then you would start uh, creating an SLD. This is what an SLD looked like. Um, it's quite a shame that we're 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 uh, having ordinary uh, data managers uh, uh, and need to have have a look at this. This should be managed by by software developers like we are. And then we have metadata editing, which is also kind of hectic. We have this pro uh, this product, you Network Open Source. It's kind of an archaic uh, interface to, to create metadata, but well, that's what it is. The thing in, in ArcGIS to create metadata. So it's not that easy having a, a proper OGC Inspire uh, service uh, on the on the web for most of us. So that's why we developed Geocat Bridge. And it gives us interoperability for all. That's nice. So what does it do? Uh, here you have ArcGIS desktop, and you have your data. You have your metadata all stored in your local system. You hit a button, and it will publish it to either GeoServer or MapServer, GeoNetwork, PostGIS, OpenLayers, the full stack that you have been hearing about all these days. So the map players are uh, uh, published as WMS, WFS, WTS, some more there. Uh, the metadata is published as CSW, RDF, RSS. Um, the data is in PostGIS, so you could use it like uh, CardoDB this morning. And the web map context, so, so the, the, the MXD, it's converted to an open format context, and you can use it in, in open layers instantly. So what typically would uh, open your arc map, uh, you would drag the layers, give them proper styling, shove them around, create some groupings. Well, actually, you have that already because you're using arc map. It's there. You install the, the bridge tool. It, it will be a, a toolbar, and there is a button to publish. This will give you this screen. I, I, have, to, I have to explain a little here. Um, these are the layers in your in your table of contents, and here you have some additional uh, fields, and and this this is managing the metadata. Um, 
the thing is that uh, Esri does, does store metadata, which is quite nice. They actually, but they use a, a, a profile, FGDC, which is uh, primarily focusing on, on, uh, on metadata uh, um, in, the, in the States. So in, in Europe, we have, we have Inspire guidelines, which, which kind of um, request more uh, metadata information. Uh, and uh, well, usually this, you would get a, like a really uh, complicated uh, metadata editing screen. But we said, hey, data publishing should be easy. You should do as little steps as, as needed to have your data uh, Inspire compliant in the cloud. So we extracted only the fields that are really required by Inspire and put them here for you to, to make some uh, additions to existing metadata or if it's totally lacking you can, can insert it here. <coughs> the, if, if you would like to make additional metadata inserts, sure you can do it. Then you go to the ArcGIS editor and, and use the, 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 the complicated interface that I have shown before. So this, the, in this bridge tool you will only have the basic required parameters uh, to put the metadata. Sorry, stay here. So then you, as soon as you're ready, you've done that for all the layers. And pro you, you do this once, eh? and, and then when you republish later, this will uh, all, all be kept in ArcGIS. So you hit the publish button, and uh, the data will get published. Um, I think I have a slide on that. No. See that? No. So what it does, it sends the data uh, to uh, your geo server, your map server, or it uh, makes a reference to existing data which you already have in Oracle or PostGIS somewhere, um, and it configures the layer in in geo server or map server. It, it converts the styling to to open formats like SLD, and it uh, takes the metadata, converts it to ISO to proper ISO 19129, and it, it's it's published in Geo Network. And quite important in there is that maybe maybe some of you did somebody try to to, to create like a real OGC compliant web services? Well, here and there is this one. Uh, no. It's actually quite uh, quite complicated to create. Um, Inspire requires us to create uh, metadata for service ISO 19119, metadata for data set 19115, and uh, a, a WMS capabilities document. And these three should be interlinked. So, so uh, UUIDs, uh, identifiers of, uh, of the data set, should be mentioned in all three of them. You should be able to click from one to the other. If you're doing this by hand, this is quite a complicated process. But this bridge uh, managed that for you. It puts all the proper UUID links in the proper uh, points. Well, as soon as you published, you have your GeoCAD Live Admin Panel or GeoCAD Panel, and here you see all the uh, layers that you've published before. You're able to, to, to do some things on there, like preview the layer in, in open layers, view, a few usage statistics, uh, remove the layer from the server if you don't need it anymore. So all is managed from, 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 uh, from within ArcGIS. <coughs> It will give you a WMC, a web map context, and this is typically what you've just seen in, a, in, a, in ArcMap. It's the same layers in the same order. Well, then the symbology conversion. Well, we don't, we're not 100%. It's, it's actually, it will never be 100% equal because uh, SLD has its limitations. Yeah, so, so some some SLD. Some ArcGIS styling things cannot be expressed in SLD. But your server created some extensions on SLD. Uh, so, so you're able, when you activate those, you, you get some more options. But we have a coverage of about 90, 95%. We have a, on the website a feature, ma a feature matrix where you can check which, which style is support and which are not. So there is uh, all kinds of line symbols and, and, and polygon fills. It's available. 
had a street which are have a core uh, 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 an angle that is always kind of a challenge but it's there <laughs> All kinds of, of point symbols, even even your own icons. Well, and, and these images are from our uh, our uh, our tests. So we, we run the tests after each build to, to check if uh, <laughs> if all the symbology comes comes fine. But it's it's actually nice for a presentation like this. But so so let's keep it to this. This, what, this is the, the, the ArcGIS uh, bridge presentation. Um, so this could be a useful tool if you have uh, an existing server technology like map server or geo server, and in your uh, desktop environment you have a setup of, uh, of uh, ArcMap. And, uh, or even when you are using ArcGIS server and you think, hey, at some point, we, uh, for example, you use ArcGIS server in your intranet and you want might want to publish the same services in your internet, but you, you don't want to put Desri uh, the, the, the ArcGIS server in the internet because uh, licensing problems, I don't know, scaling. Um, so at that point, Bridge can be really useful because it, give you, it will give you a similar user experience as ArcGIS server. With a hit of a button, you will have the same MXD, but then in an open platform. Uh, okay, but uh, so so our, our bridge is uh, is around now for for three years or so, and it's it's used quite quite in a lot of places. Um, but we noticed that um, we missed a, a group of potential users. And those were the users who were not like able to to set up their own uh, SDI themselves. And it's quite complicated to uh, just if you want to give the software a test ride. You, bridge installation is just next, 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 finish. But uh, then comes the complicated part because you have to start, uh, install Map Server, which needs uh, good all uh, dependencies. Uh, for Windows, you have this MS, MS4W uh, thing, but in, in Unix, it, it could be quite uh, messy. Also, for for for, uh, for regular users, uh, even a geo server setup can be quite complicated. <laughs> and um, also, yeah, we were looking at the business model, and and, and I thought maybe the, the current business model we 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 sell uh, Bridge as a licensed model, uh, but uh, we might uh, want to introduce more uh, options there in the business model. So that's why we've developed. GeoCat Live. Ta da! This is the first mention of GeoCat Live being available. And uh, it's actually alpha testing, so it's not available yet, but we've, we've, come, in, we've, come, we've come, uh, come a whole way with it. And it gives interoperability for even more people. <laughs> because now people not able, like the small communities, not being able to set up their own SDI can now publish uh, to the cloud using uh, GeoCut Live. So GeoCut Live is a, is a, uh, an, an hosted, um, um, well, the, all the stuff I just mentioned, the full stack, it's, uh, it's running in our environment. And uh, uh, people can get, uh, you can get a free account uh, up to 50 MB to, to give uh, Bridge a, a free uh, a test ride. And, uh, well, we, we've seen quite a lot of, of, of these hosted solutions here at, at Fast4G. That's great. And uh, some of them are amazing in, in the visual fireworks that you get, get to you. And, uh, and that's inspiring for us, too. We're, we're, we're a small team. But I think still there is a, there's a need for, for, um, for Inspire-compliant um, uh, cloud services. So this morning we saw this at the in Geo Clouds pr project, and uh, and and also the Mango Mango Map uh, presentation. Uh, did you visit any of you uh, this morning? Well, yeah, here and there. So I think our cloud solution is in the middle of those two. Like you have Mango Map, which is uh, really uh, fancy, but it doesn't really do the metadata stuff. And you have uh, in Geo in Geo Cloud in Geo. Was it? 
it, but it's really technical and it's really quite kind of complicated, but it does the full thing. And we're like in the middle of that. So we have some visual, uh, visual well, we, 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 we uh, our aim is to give the Ezra user a really uh, fluent uh, user experience in publishing to the cloud. This, that's, that's where our focus is. Well, as soon as it's in the cloud, everybody can use it. They can do it, and they can, they can do, put any visual on it. So if you, if you go to the website, you can, can register. Then you get, get to download this bridge extension. You, you, you put it in, in uh, ArcMap, and you start publishing. Um, we have an well, this is quite basic still, but uh, it will work out. Um, if you follow us in the coming weeks, you'll, you'll see this evolving. Uh, so you can browse maps, and, and you'll find maps contributed by users. You can then click on View Layer, and we'll open in a map. There's an admin panel to uh, edit the account details, manage the resources, and, and view the user uh, statistics. There will be availability reports as required by the uh, European Union to, to uh, conform to the INSPIRE regulations. Well, this is the website. We're in alpha phase, so currently not accepting uh, new users, uh, but on invite only. It means if you give me your business card, I'll send you an email this week so you can start using it. Um, so contact one of us to get your account set up. <coughs> so what's next? There's linked data endpoint. Right? Linked data. Uh, we had a session on linked data uh, yesterday, and there were only 20 people showing up. It was, it was a shame, shame you. <laughs> linked data is the next thing. And then uh, uh, John Goodwin gave a really good introduction on linked data for Geo. And uh, it's a shame that there was only 20 people. Um, Linked data might be able to cross that bridge between geo ICT and, and real ICT. Um, there will be inspire validation, there will be monitoring, there will be reporting. Um, and there will be a bridge, a bridge for QGIS. The Open Geo Group is currently working on a, on a bridge product um, in QGIS. They, they, uh, we, we support them with our uh, um, user experience in, in, in this kind of tooling. And uh, it's currently in alpha phase, so it, it will be uh, in production soon. And there will be Geo Package Transfer Export. Geo Package is this new uh, OGC standard to um, create uh, like a, a full package of, of uh, data and metadata. So it has... Um, for our bridge tool, this, this is really useful because now we, we convert the data to some the data to an intermediate format and send it to the server. We take the metadata and send it to the server. We take the configuration and put it in the server. But it, with the geo package, we'll be able to uh, put that all in one open uh, uh, package and send it to the server at once. But this geo package can also be used in a mobile phone. So you could use bridge to create uh, a package download it to your phone and you, when you're in, an, in a place where, where there's no internet connection you still have the same map data as you had in your uh, MXD. Thank you. So this is a... I know we have some 10 minutes for questions. <laughs> Um, so, so the current business model for, you, for, for Bridge is that we sell you a license and uh, you can publish to any cloud. Uh, your own geo server, your own map server, or uh, uh, the Geodon cloud, maybe. Uh, it could be useful use case for you. Uh, so, so also, we're, if, if you want to partner with us uh, because you have your own cloud solution and you think this is a useful asset for your, for your cloud solution, Please contact us because uh, we have reseller prices. Uh, we, uh, so that's that's like the, the the paid subscription. But then if you have a like the new business model thing is that you get the bridge for free, but you publish to our cloud, and we, we make the money on on cloud. 
data. It's the same same code base. It's, it's a compiler flag which like makes it to uh, this or that. Um, you can publish to any cloud. The current bridge publishes to, to any uh, Geo server REST API or map server uh, uses currently FTP, but there is there are some developments that also have a REST API for map server, which is similar. Yeah. No, so uh, Open OpenGeo leads this development. So it will be it will be it will be a similar user user experience, but it will not be an OpenGeo package. But we're we're working with them to to share user experience. Hmm? Oh, sorry, boundless. <laughs> boundless. <laughs> uh, I don't. Yeah, it could be part of the OpenGeo suite, but it's currently it's 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 in GitHub as a as a separate uh, thing. It does map files because the current as well, yeah ma the, the map map file uh, is uh, has uh, far more features than, than the current as the implementation in map server. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen users uploading uh, like uh, files up to a couple of hundred MBs, uh, but. Uh, Sure, there's limits, but not necessarily on on uh, on the bridge side or on the. Sometimes it's uh, the proxy or the firewall. It's, it it has our attention to. It's it's not streaming, so so we we cannot upload gigabytes of data. If that's the case, we 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 need alternative uh, ETL solutions, which is no problem because you can like also say okay. Uh, you check a box that the data is already available in the server and find some alternative route to, to push the data. Well, if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to, to contact me or Jeroen or one of the other GeoCAD staff. We're, we're, we're all here.